Hey guys. What's going on? How are we all doing? Good. 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 Thank you. Rocking the Cosmo, man. Right on. I'm here with uh, Diggity Dave and uh, Jason Alexander's illegitimate daughter, <laughs> Seven. Um, got a shit ton to talk about, a uh, new project uh, they're involved in. But uh, before that, everybody, I'm sure that you know who they are. Um, Diggity, just give us a quick bio for the two people living in snowbanks here in Canada. All right. So uh, a, a personal bio or a bio on the band? What do you, what do you uh, personal bio. Yeah. So basically for me, man, I mean, I uh, I started in the music industry at an early age. I got a record deal with Arista Records when I was yeah. in my teens. And uh, that kind of put me, um, you know, into the, the lane of music pretty much my whole life, which uh, led me to a band with Tommy Thayer, who's uh, currently now in Kiss. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. band also consisted of Kenny Queens, who was in a band called Beautiful Creatures. He yeah. played in L.A. Guns for a while. And uh, Danny Parker and Brian Jennings, who are in Hollywood Gods and Monsters with us. And also several other people that went on to have some notoriety, like Xavier, who was the drummer for Buck Cherry, was in uh, Shake the Faith with me and Tommy and Brian and Danny for, for three years, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and we got signed to Warner Brothers and we did the whole record and stuff like that. And the band kind of just fell apart under the, the weight and the pressures of being like the largest band in L.A. and just the sudden yeah and alcohol abuse and all the you know the formidable things that happen when you're in a rock and roll band and that kind of led me to mtv uh, because we had already had a lot of affiliation with mtv um they just asked me to start coming aboard and doing things for them and i shot a bunch of pilots for them and inevitably they ended up putting me on pin my ride yeah which, yeah. yeah for me was a was a challenge because as much as i love cars and i was you know i was into helping design uh, certain kind of things for galpin ford uh, I was never looking to be like at the forefront in the face of something like that. Uh, but man, Ernest, I got to tell you, brother, like what a blessing that show was. I mean, yeah. themed in 162 countries around the world, wow. like one of the highest rated television shows ever. Yeah, uh, It really changed the landscape of my life and it, it yeah. pretty much has perpetuated and set me up to do everything I've done, including all the other TV shows that I've been on. I've been on a plethora of shows. One uh, more notable was uh, a show with Tommy Lee, who's like one of my best friends from Motley Crue. And Ludacris, who's now become like one of my dear friends, a show called Battleground Earth, trying to yeah. Uh, shed, yeah, shed light on global warming and the planet, the planet and stuff. So, and that's what kind of literally got me back into music was uh, being around all those musicians, buddies of mine, and seeing them do this. After COVID, I just kind of said, it's time for me to get off the bench, coach, and put me back in. And that's yeah. how the formation of Hollywood Gods and Monsters came about. Right on. And Chris, uh, tell me about you. I know you, uh, you like to write. Yes, I have uh, two children's books out that you can get on um, Amazon or, or um, Barnes and Noble. Um, I love to write. Yeah, kids a uh, special place uh, in my. Life. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, tell me how you brought the first book out. I know the background, but uh, let us let the viewers know what brought you to write that first book. Well, my son, um, uh, when he was young was having a hard time at school mm -hmm. and he came to me and and uh, just said mom I know that heaven's real just sometimes I wish I could just skip all this and just go ahead and go there <laughs> and I oh, just no. said instead of going oh buck up kid you know it's gonna be okay I just went dude I understand I get it sometimes I want to go there too and um and that's what inspired me to write the little flower which is um, helping kids. I use plants and animals to help kids deal with tough situations like bullying and um, and uh, thoughts of you know wanting to give up and things like that. Right on. No, that's a good story. Um, so yeah, I, I know you're friends with uh, Tommy there, Dave. Uh, he's a uh, quite the friggin' prankster, eh? Uh, he's yeah. He <laughs> man, I got stories, brother. Like we uh, we'd have to be on like the porn channel or something like. Pornhub or whatever because <laughs> that dude man like um he's just everything you would expect and want out of Tommy Lee I mean yeah. he is the real genuine article man 24 7 there's no facade he's like one of the most genuine guys I've ever known in my life like of all the people I've grown up with like Marilyn Manson slash like all these not to name drop but just guys who are you know who have earned this kind of like this rock and roll royalty I've never seen anybody operate with such a, a a loose apparatus as Tommy does. He has no security. He he never says no, and he'll be the last guy in the room and refuses to leave anywhere we go until he took 
every photo and signed every autograph. He's just a, a really genuine dude, man. And he is a prankster, man. I mean, that guy, you can never, you don't ever want to get too drunk around him unless you have your own personal security because you never know what's going to happen to you. Like, you'll end up in the bed with, like, a group of midgets or, like, he does all kinds of crazy stuff, like, once you get drunk. So Isn't that illegal? Uh, it's <laughs> it, in certain states. In Kentucky, it is. Oh, okay. So I've, I've been led to believe. Um, but, yeah, we just, you know, we every time we've ever been around each other, man, it's just been a... It's been a, uh, you know, we always post bail before we get into a state just in case, you know, something's yeah, going to happen. You want to be, um, yeah, you want to beat the, the rush, you know, we want to be ahead of the, ahead of the rest of the, of the drunk clowns. That's uh, but, thinking. That's awesome. That's it, man. You know, the people say the rock and roll guys don't use their brains. You know, we do when it, <laughs> when it comes to interrupting in our, our partying. So we, uh, we've, uh, we've yet to be arrested together, but, uh, yeah, he's, uh, I don't know if you ever met him, Ernest, but if you ever do, man, like you're going to walk away with this feeling of like certain people have earned the right to be called icons. And he's definitely one of those cats, man. Well, I, I really like the fact that you said uh, he doesn't say no. So I'm going to be getting uh, sending an email out to you after this interview. <laughs> you should, man. You should. He, he's uh, you're, you'd be shocked. You'll probably hear back from him. I mean, seriously, I've, I've sent people his way before, not for interviews, but just for other things. And they said, I never expected. And my phone's ringing and it's Tommy calling me like i saw this number and i didn't recognize and i answered and they're like yeah hey it's tommy lee what's up man Diggs told wow, me to that's, that's just amazing a actually not to interrupt no. they were my favorite band growing up in the 80s too fast for love that's what i grew up with so right um, that's awesome but anyways let's get back to you cats here okay so you got six in the band there's you two you got brian and danny from your previous band um and then you have two of them and i want to leave the um the um the female you know what I'm talking about from uh, <laughs> not the band Steve, but uh, Travis. <laughs> yeah, well, you blew it. No. Uh, so you got uh, you got hype in the band, right? Harper, and you have um, X Steel Panther, uh, uh, Travis Haley, aka Lexi Fox. Um, when he left the band, I wrote an interview, or excuse me, I wrote a article, RIP, and people were like, "What?" I'm like, "Retire in peace" is what it meant. Right? right? Yeah. I love cool. that. So it's genius. Yeah, well, I mean, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, what brought you guys together? Like, I, I mean, I, I, I know the history and the way that you guys grew up together, but um, what synced? Was it something before he left Panther that you guys had been talking about, or was it after um, he was relieved of his duties there, and then you guys got to talking? And it's a good story. Yeah. It's so basically, I had when I started putting the band together. Um, I made a wish list of dudes that I was going to hit up and, you know, a, a, a three, it was a three tier list. So it was like guys that I, I would think would be like, yeah, I definitely want to be in this guys in the middle that I'd probably have to massage and convince a little bit like, yo, this is what I'm trying to do. And they've never heard this kind of music. So I'd have to kind of walk them through this and explain to them like what the, this entails. And then the other list was just a wish list of guys like, you know, maybe like Nikki six or somebody that would be out of, out of my reach. Uh, even though I'd known Nikki, I just think he wouldn't be down to do something like this. Mm -hmm. And there was only one name on that wish list, and that was Travis. The yeah. rest of the people all fell in the A category, which is, I know all these guys will do it. It's just right. a matter of me reaching out and telling them, like, what this is going to entail. And so Travis being on the wish list, I, I, I brought it up to, to Seven, to Chris, and and uh, she's like, well, get a hold of him. And I was like, well, he's in Still Panther. I mean, he's just too busy, and there's no way that cat's, you know, as much as we love him and our relationship is so codified in like such a rich history of, of not just friendship, but just tumble down rock and roll, like throw down partying. And like, we've lived the same existence being, and uh, Travis has me and Tommy has, and we've been friends just as long. So um, I just said, it's not going to happen. And she's just like, all right, cool. And then lo and behold, like you said, man, you know, like we get the news on the internet that he's out of the band and I come downstairs and I tell seven that, you're not going to believe this, but Travis is bounced. Like he's not in Steel Panther anymore. And she's like, we need to call him. Like right now, I was like, girl, stop tripping. Like, first of all, this guy needs a breather. Like the body's not even cold yet. Let's give him yeah. some time to like, you know, decompress and like get his shit together. And she's like, no, I'm going to call him right now. I go, I go, Chris, just chill. Like, don't be so aggressive. Like just back off. This girl doesn't listen to anything anybody says, especially from this band. So, you know, she's, she just does what she wants to do. She blows her own horn. So I, I bounced. I, I went back to the rehearsal room. She stood outside in the hallway and called him immediately. 
and against my my you know my my desires of hey you gotta you gotta strike while the iron's hot yeah That's so right. she called him up and told him what was going on and he was just like look I'm really flattered you know I love you guys and you know I, I saw you know I saw some rumblings and heard you know mutual friends you guys had put something together and and uh, it just Ernest it literally just kind of snowballed from there it was it was more we we got on the phone and he had been listening to to shake the faith in his yep. car when chris called him of all things he's listening to our our record that me and tommy and brian and danny did at the moment she called him and he took a snapshot and said you're not going to believe this what i'm listening to right now he's like wow he goes it's one of my favorite records and so he basically you know he was him being the cordial uh tender soft kid that he is he was kind of you know, like standoffs, you know, sense going, listen, man, I just got out of this. Like, you know, I haven't been out of it more than, you know, four days. And um, four I'm down days. to like, it was four days, man. She, she well, didn't, like I said, aggressive. She, she's super <laughs> aggressive, bro. And so, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, you don't have to be in a band with her, brother. Like, yeah. I speak for everybody. Like, she kicks kicks ass and snips <laughs> balls, man. But, uh, and that was it, man. Travis just kind of like, you know, in, a, in the most uh, jovial kind of joking around, but tender way the way he is he kind of said guys i'm interested but i just i can't do this anything like that right now he needed some time yeah, i need some time man so we just said let's give him some time and we just kept getting on the phone like every other day just catching up about our history of being teenagers in the streets of los angeles and you know we were the very first band that he ever saw when he came to la he had not even been in la eight hours and wow. his friends were like dude you got to come see this band it's old black and blue guitar player and cold gin Remember Tommy Thayer? Yeah. And they're like the biggest band in LA. And so he said he, you know, he hadn't been there eight hours and they stood in line forever waiting to get in and the place was sold out. And he said he just stood there and wanted to move back to Ohio after he saw the band because he said it's so intimidating. He was like, I don't think I'm up to that caliber. It's just how everybody is in it right now, just this band. And that's how we became friends. He came backstage and and um uh Jamie St. James actually brought him backstage to meet us and nice. me and Travis just fell in love with each other, man. We've just yeah. been, you know, we've been, we've been buddies ever since. And that's what literally Ernest what got him past the finish line in such a short amount of time in less than a month. Um, he was dead serious about exploring the possibilities of being in this. And we started exchanging music and I started telling him like what, you know, what the uh, foundation of this band was and what we we're trying to accomplish with pretty much what, what I sent you in the bio about the, yeah. you know, the, discography of like all the bands we're trying to like you know represent of all genres and also bringing back like the, the image and the attitude of rock stars again so that hip-hop doesn't just own that lane like they are and mm -hmm. country music for that matter right and um that was it man he, he flew in um spent a weekend with us and we went through you know the the um laborious process of like just jamming together and piecing this frankenstein monster together and he was like i'm in man like i would be foolish not to do this it's like single-handed like coolest thing i've ever done so i mean you know not to knock still panther that's a whole different thing oh, yeah. animal on its own but as far as him going uh, of my, after life after sp what could i possibly see myself in this is the only thing i could see myself doing so that's the story of how travis got in yeah he, he doesn't like to do normal things no <laughs> He, yeah. And he doesn't have to. I mean, he's Boring. yeah. He's been yeah. getting hit up. You know, I won't name drop because that, you know, that's between him to speak about who's been hitting him up. But we're we're very conscious of the fact that the guy's been hit up by by the top tier uh, bands and 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 uh, solo artists in the industry. You know, we 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 know that he's in demand because of his ability to play. And the other thing too is most people that are watching your show right now won't understand like the depth of this guy's ability because if you can't gauge this guy. Uh, on what he did in Steel Panther because right. that was just a mainstream kind of um, you know rock and roll band. He's a he's a you know he's a a true um, he's just the, the true essence of a, of a real diverse bass player. His his roots in R and B and okay. and and dance music is beyond. He's amazing. He's, a, he's incredible. I mean the 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 bass slapping and and the you know the way he approaches dance music is completely something that nobody would expect him to be doing in Steel Panther because they weren't really a dance band where our thing kind of has that element in it. And we needed somebody to be able to play that kind of style that could come in and play Tupac or play like, you know, or play, uh, you know, Biggie or something like that and, yeah. and, and really put the real, not metal essence into it, but really sound like you're uh, a black bass player. 
And yeah. Amanda's he, bring, he brings the noise, man. He's he's the shit, man. I, I can, I uh, was listening to the music uh, a couple weeks ago, and then when you sent me that um, link, um, I can see that being played in a, like uh, a $3 million um, nightclub, like in Acapulco, the Palladium. I can see that music playing. I was blown away, literally, when I heard uh, uh, Georgia, Flor Florida, Georgia line. Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. And the Foo Fighters. Yeah. And it works, man. I mean, yeah, it, it just, does work. It you guys, you guys just it just intertwines just perfectly. It's it's amazing. Yeah. I, I if somebody would it would tell me about it, I'd be like, that's not going to work. But you know what? As God is my witness, I, I listen to it and it works. You got You're yeah, very man. gracious, brother. We appreciate that. You were here uh, a mashup here and there, maybe two songs. But this guy is the genius. He's the Doctor Frankenstein behind the band. That guy's your husband. He's mashing right? up. He's mashing up five six genres five yeah. six songs all in one song and it fits together perfectly as as you've heard and um that's our goal is just to get people up and dancing it's 2020 was a hard year you know we're all still recovering from that and we just want we just want to get people dancing we want to get people rocking out again so who did you guys grow up um well obviously you guys are very diverse i mean genre wise but what was your main go-to like i'm pretty sure dave it was you know, the rock issue, like with LA Guns and, and things like that. That's the kind of, is that your music growing well, up? Me with, yeah, it was punk rock, man. I was, I, I was, uh, I got Sid Vicious tattooed on my arm when I was 14. Well, uh, I was majorly into like the, the Clash and the Pistols, uh, Gen Generation X, like, uh, you know, the Slits. Like, I was just really influenced by the, the you know, the English scene. I was a, a kid when it was already over with that genre, but my mom was like really diverse in music and she brought home the Sex Pistols record for me and, and never mind the Bullocks. And I, I fucking just lost my shit, man. I, I had up until that point, I had been listening to like bands like ACDC and, and Ted Nugent and, yeah. and uh, you know, Sabbath and UFO and, and Def Leppard, of course. Mm. Um, but that band just for me, it just uh, it really introduced me to like the true essence of like anarchy meets image meets attitude, meets like live fast, die fast, you know, leave a good looking corpse. And that just really appealed to me at that, at that time of my life. And that was like my biggest inspiration, man, was punk rock. And I, I know who her influences are, so I'll let her. So I'm, I'm the baby by, by many, many years of a brother and two sisters. So I was around many different genres of music, which I like them all. I, I love music, period, but I'm definitely a rock and roll girl. I, I grew up listening to a lot of Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, and um, Eagles, and I discovered uh, Def Leppard. It was yeah. Motley Crue and Def Leppard, you know, but Def Leppard is definitely, I said, one of these days I'm going to meet those guys, but I um, I absolutely love that band, and I'm definitely a rock girl. But it was also what was important about the punk thing was like, you know, when, when I heard Rock the Casbah by The Clash, and it was a dance song, right. I, I, I started to understand that at my formidable years like that, that stuff could be married together with that kind of music. Um, you know, when I heard what Malcolm McLaren was doing, like with the Sex Pistols, like he went on and did some solo stuff uh, with PIL and bands like that. And it was more dance music than it was anything. You know, Three Buffalo Girls Go Around the Outside, like these crazy songs that, he, that they were putting out. It, 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 you know, and this was like after post-disco era and it, it worked, man. And so, I, you know, my mom just was so amazing to introduce me to like, like the Gap Band and, Roger Troutman and Zap and the Daz Band and SOS and like all these like dance bands and even even you know just incredible singers like Marvin Gaye and people that had you know Aretha Franklin. So I, I came from a background of like rich in in diversity and not really labeling any music that I, was my favorite other than I loved all music and I think that's what helped with the mashup stuff is me being able to come in and smash the you know, artists that I grew up with and saying. It all works because it's all cut from only one single cloth, which is, you know, there's seven chords and there's three notes and there's, you know, one musical verse, which is just uh, diversity. And, and you can throw black artists with white artists. And as long as you have a true appreciation of those bands and where they come from, where their roots are, I think you can pay uh, equal homage to that kind of music, you know. And that's another thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to bring unity and with our different genres of music, um, just bringing people together, black, yeah. white, no racism, no judgment, just love, just that, coming that, together. And, love. and that's why we, we, we knew, Ernest, that we needed to get like a real hip hop guy. And you know, we were on the quest to find a rapper um, because um, 
we knew that our platform so you know we haven't played it out live yet we're actually in the in the uh throes of setting that all up right now but you know our our um one of our trademarks is we all wear two band-aids on stage we wear a white band-aid and a black band-aid and basically it's for, because it represents a, we're a band and it, music is an, an aid you know it helps right. heal the soul and the diversity of having the dichotomy of having like hip-hop black rappers on stage with a bunch of white rocker guys uh we just want to show that you know that uniformity and that uh just kind of it, inclusion of like you know we're all together in this man and you know we're already getting the hate man people like you know this and this because of this or that and, and we're just trying to explain to people like man you know for the first time ever man there's a band out there with no agenda other than just right. we just want to make people feel good man we just want people to come to the shows and dance their ass off and hear all this music they they grew up with or their parents introduced them to and walk out of there and just go that was the most fucking bananas shit i've ever experienced and <laughs> what an amazing fucking time and there was no politics on stage yeah. there was no judgment it was just pure music man you know and and if people want to hate on that man then fucking we will be the most hated band in the world because that's what our agenda is you know well yeah i mean i get some haters too but i mean if you look at it the haters are just 35 year old men in their underwear and their parents basement. you're so right that is so <laughs> right? true their little finger swords in their right. mom's basement you know but even those cats man like we're, <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to keys to them too like we're we're saying yo man yeah you know, like, you're gonna enjoy yeah, yourself like, get, off, check get, us get out. off your mom's couch get out of your your, your onesies <laughs> ask, to the ask for your allowance from your parents and go yeah, yeah. exactly man but i mean this genuinely man like I'm, yeah i'm speaking to all those cats out there like right now to you personally like, we're calling on you too man like you know the world isn't giving up on you man like get off your I ass man you get back into society and that's where all the hot that. girls are going to be exactly. shaking their shaking their booties yeah. you want to come and check out these girls the girls are going to be <laughs> up front shaking their butts it's going to be well, hot you, you might get them to go out or they might just go to Pornhub. you know whatever right, there you go <laughs> man there you go so what's what's the temperature in arizona um wise we're lockdowns and shit what's it like there uh, yeah so we're good man like yeah. we were always good uh, I still live in LA too, so I live in both places, man. So, uh, but California was absolutely completely on lockdown. Arizona never really got locked down because Governor Ducey is like a strong Republican, nice. Trump leaning dude, and uh, he just kind of, you know, he went the way of like Trump's advice not to lock anything down. So, you know, when I figured out that LA was going to be on lockdown, man, I came and spent a lot more time here because yeah. bars were open. The, there was still a restaurant scene going on. It was hit a little bit earnest in the, in the summer of 2020, but we were one of the fastest to reopen and the infection rate has went down. Yeah. Uh, we're doing pretty good as a state, man. So we're happy to be in a, in a, you know, in a state where people uh, don't think it's a hoax. You know, most people here, regardless of where they lean politically, believe in vaccinations. Mm -hmm. uh, we surely do. You know, we we implore everybody to get vaccinated. We've been vaccinated. Um, and uh, I think everybody in our band has had COVID. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I don't think there's anybody in it that hasn't had it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Travis has had it or not. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if you've had it yet. But, well, uh, it, I mean, I think I might have, but I mean, I got to come and live in Arizona. Like this country here in Canada, I don't know if you're aware, it's, we're probably, um, pubic hair from being a communist country <laughs> oh my god Jeez, I didn't know. yeah they you know what they just took away the 24-hour clock on us oh my god ah <laughs> didn't did, 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 uh, did, did trudeau just get reelected? yeah yeah he imagine did. that <laughs> i thought he was a good dude man i mean i know uh, he's a little liberal for for a country of your diversity but i always thought that he was like somewhat sensible about his kind of staying in the middle of the road i guess i was wrong man you know uh, he, he's a he's a pretty boy that's for sure that's for yeah. sure yeah he's but, easy um, on the eyes <laughs> yeah but so we uh, was, go ahead man i was oh, gonna say go you guys haven't played live yet so you've jammed together as the six of you have jammed together yes but, um how many tracks do you guys have um down are you guys going to be releasing an ep or an album we're putting out a record, man. Yeah, it's called uh, Beats from the Bomb Shelter, the Switchblade Summer Tapes Volume 1. Totally and uh, we're currently working on that right now, and, and it's uh, 15 songs. Whoa. Uh, yeah, so we our, our set, our current set right now is 15 songs that we rehearsed, and the album is going to have 15 songs. And the kicker about this whole thing, Ernest, is like the record will be available early 2022, and it's going to be free. It's going to be a free digital download. We're not going to charge anybody. It's basically our kind of regifting back. Wow, that's uh, once awesome. Again, like, yeah, we're just not trying to, like, capitalize on it. Not everything is monetary. Not everything is no. built on the back of, like, 
trying to make money and stuff. And, uh, you know, we understand like not, you know, the world you rarely gives you anything for free. And it's just right. kind of like uh, our way of saying, yo, man, like here's something that you can uh, have where it's not going to cost you a penny, you know? Well, that's awesome. But come um, to our shows. Yeah. <laughs> but come to our shows. Yeah. I was just going to say, you know what? Um, Hollywood gods and monsters. I mean, I'm thinking Hall Halloween. I mean, have you been right. approached to do Halloween parties? I mean, yeah, yeah. we've been, we've been getting bombarded, but like, you know, we, we've had so many offers to play, man, but we, we're in a situation where um, we are consummate professionals and each one of us has a brand and we're mm -hmm. very well aware of the brand awareness factor. So we want to make sure that we're not uh, prematurely going to be out there just because there's a lot of money being thrown at us right now yeah. for offers to play, especially on Halloween weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so the band's going to play out when the band's ready to play out, but it's probably going to be somewhere in November is when we start getting out there. We have, like I said, we have offers uh, from coast to coast to like come do stuff or even overseas. Wow. Um, yeah. So you know, we've been very uh, fortunate and we're humbled by the fact that without people, you know, seeing us on a single stage yet, people are literally throwing out the invites like crazy. And, uh, you know, we understand a lot of that has to be attributed to uh, the, the fact that uh, Travis brings a lot of heat to the band as far as notoriety. Right. Uh, there's a couple of marquee guys in the band that have names worldwide. People mm -hmm. are intrigued by that. But uh, I also know that, you know, just from the DMs and the emails and outside of the hate factor, the hate right. loop, uh, the people are really intrigued to see how this thing's going to work live, you know, how, how you pull off this kind of music uh, live. And trust me, brother, it, it comes off. I mean, it's, it's as sonic and sound as it is what you heard on that link as it is live, if not bigger. So it's a, it's a pretty big sounding band and you're very insightful when you said uh 10 minutes ago like you could see this thing playing like at some 10 million dollar place in like the caribbean or something that's what this thing is built for man yeah. this isn't a you know you'll never see this band playing at like uh joe's crab shack you know at, like in some strip mall or something like it's not you know we're not a cover band that's not what this is no. we, we don't do, yeah we don't do three sets a night it's not it's not that it's not built for that what this is built for like is like the mgm grand uh the virgin hotel in vegas uh, you know, clubs in Miami, New York, Los Angeles, uh, Chicago, major markets, but in, places in between also theaters, you know, uh, ample theaters, places like that. But it's definitely it's built for larger audiences. And that's that's what our intended goal is to try to reach as many people and, and uh, get the message out of what of that music heals. And, and just, you know, like once again, just trying to have a good time man, and not beat you over the brow with like political messaging or right. anti-vaxxing or vaxxing or this versus that or police brutality or defunding police or all the stuff that we have to wake up and listen to this this white noise every single day yeah. especially living in this fucking country man so uh, <laughs> yeah hey, include my communist country too yeah but i'm telling you man if you guys think you got it bad there man come down here and you know stay here a year and you'll be you'll be begging to get back into canada bro. Oh. <laughs> i love i love my country man i'm not dissing it but it's just people in this country are so divided man and but you know the one thing we can all agree on man is fucking people love music man yeah and exactly. music is universal it's the only it's the only media you know even more than movies or television or anything else it's the only media that transcends religions politics uh personal uh societal background like uh wealth and income it's just music brings people together man music so, and food yeah that's one thing we music all have in food, common yes you know? I don't know about food, but yeah. A <laughs> um, couple of questions uh, here for the Canadian audience as well as the American viewers. Um, Martin Short. Yes. Or, or yeah. Dan Aykroyd. Martin, Martin Short, Short. For certain, man. Marty Dan, Dan Aykroyd's cool too, but Martin, Martin Short. Martin Short is the bomb, man. All right. Uh, Triumph or Lover Boy? Triumph. Oh, man, that's so for hard. Me, triumph. Rick triumph. Rick Emmett and the boys, man. Rick Evans. Yeah. Hey, that's yeah. the... I'm telling you, man, uh, uh, that Alliance record, uh, Fight the Good Fight, that was like a groundbreaking record for me, man, as a kid, you know, seeing that flying V on the record and, yeah. uh, you know, they, they were somewhat remind me of Rush, but they weren't as progressive and they were more just straight, straight middle road rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Rick Emmett's voice, man, that high, he has such a range, man. And yeah. to this day, like we still listen to that stuff all the time and just go with, this stuff is timeless. That song, Power of Music. Yes, yeah. The kids out there need to check that out. But that, that song by Triumph is exactly what this band's all about, Power of Music. Yeah, Rick was is a good songwriter. And speaking of a segue, I've got an interview coming up, uh, kids, with uh, 
Rick Emmett, he's got a book of poetry, so that's going to be interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, um, that's a, I mean, that dude's a living legend, man. I mean, yeah. You know, um, he's, you know, he does a lot of stuff. He still plays out. I mean, I remember uh, just seeing some stuff in LA like a couple years ago where they were playing down at the, I believe it was the Greek or something, and I was sold out. I mean, was he he's got a lot. Um, yeah, he's, he's done NAM and all those shows too. Yeah, he's always down at doing those music conferences and stuff. But he's a, you know, um, he's one of those uh, guys that uh, we here in America thank you guys for the contribution of giving us one of your one of your mates there and and uh, uh, allowing him to like kind of raise us on the radio with his music because he's uh, he's a pretty prolific dude, man. Right on. Um, okay, coffee or tea? Uh, neither for me. I like coffee and tea. Cup of I'm, coffee in the morning, tea. The rest. I'm, I'm a Georgia girl, so I grew up drinking sweet tea. I've never sweet had tea. a cup of coffee in my life, and I've never had a glass. Of really? Tea. Never. Yeah. He's never. he's so weird. He's so weird. He doesn't eat hardly anything. There's only I love to cook, and uh, like I made his favorite last night: he loves some mashed potatoes. And uh, there there, but there are a few things I can get him to eat. He just I love mashed food. Potatoes. He's like, yeah, I can't have to get that recipe. What is? Oh, dude, it's just I, I it's I don't know. If, <laughs> I put sour cream in mine. Oh, you do? You go, you're one of those guys. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of I'm a Canadian, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. Yeah, she, she's a she's a really good cook, man. So it's a, you know it helps to uh, when I do get hungry, when I start getting those those jitters, that's when I'll eat. I'm just too uh, in, immersed in like the stuff that I do. Uh, as far as like painting and like you know just uh, I'm, I'm I'm a director and I'm, I'm writing yeah. some movie scripts right now so I uh, I feel like sleep and eating is just such a waste of time it's so overrated man you're, you're <laughs> it just cuts into your work bro, man yeah you got to stay focused man so um, but yeah spends a lot of time in the back cave yeah just <laughs> creating yeah. Franken just Dr yeah. Frankenstein stuff yeah. so seven. Uh, how did you get your name? Um, I'm pretty sure you're not George's daughter, are you? <laughs> I'm I'm Mitchell Griffin's daughter. Now my dad, um, I, like I said, I'm from Georgia. Um, seven, my birthday is seven seventeen. Seven's the number that's always followed me. Um, it just seems to creep up everywhere I go, and it's definitely my favorite number. And it's always been like, God, you have a lot of sevens around you all the time. So I started getting called seven. <laughs> Do you sign things with seven? Uh, yeah. Because you can, because legally, I know in Canada, as long as you do it consistently, and plus everything's <laughs> recorded, so I mean. Yeah, right. No right, one cares. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Right on. Well, I'm glad to, I got to speak to you guys. Um, I can't wait until the album comes out. You said early 2022? Yeah, early 2022 will be out, yeah. And, you know, there'll be a there'll be a lot of press before it comes out and stuff. And like I said, you know, people will be able to go to like the, you know, the, the normal platforms and do a digital download and it'll be for free. Nice. Um, and, you know, we're also doing, uh, you know, we're giving some of our profits away from our merchandise to organizations like children's organizations and oh, pediatric nice. AIDS foundation, make a wish foundation. So nice. a lot of the stuff we're trying to gift back, you know, to, uh, mm. to more needier people that are in uh, a position to, uh, you know, to use some of that, that uh, that not just our platform, but use some money to to throw some of the towards these organizations. So Most veterans course. also, you know, we I'm very embedded in helping our our, our military veterans. So well, that's great. You know, I mean, we're gonna be awesome. um, we're gonna be selling our t-shirts and hats soon. But you can go on Facebook or Instagram, look for us, and uh, we have some of our songs posted there that people can listen to. So give us, give the give the viewers the links then, uh, Chris. Uh, well, you can, on Facebook, um, he's under uh, Diggity Dave Aragon. Uh, you can find me under Chris, K-R-I-S, Aragon, seven. And um, my, what's our? Hollywood? Instagram is Hollywood Gods and Monsters, Instagram page. Yep. And Facebook also, also is under Hollywood Gods and Monsters. There's a couple of fan pages, too, on there. Um, so you can pick For the either love of one. Hollywood yeah. Gods and Monsters. And, and another one. Yeah, so you can pick whatever one you want, but all the information that we do obviously will be will be portaled through those through those uh, social media platforms. Perfect. Okay, everybody, hit the uh, like and the subscribe button. And uh, final words, you got anything to say to your Canadian uh, fans out there, guys? Yeah, we can't wait to get out there and uh, see you guys at some shows and bring the love to you guys. And we wanted to uh, foremost thank you, Ernest, for thank uh, you. right out of the gate, man, just being such a kind dude and giving us this opportunity to speak to you and your 
and your uh, listeners, man. And, yeah, uh, both of them. No, I'm just kidding. There's more. Than no, that. Man, <laughs> man, you know what? Let me tell you, that'll be two more than we had this morning. So it's you know, it, keep fighting the good fight, my brother. You know, all right. A great yeah. lyricist, man. And we appreciate you, man. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Love you guys. Thank Cheers. You,